building a house can be super stressful and way overwhelming. In today's video, we're gonna jump into the new construction upgrades that you should avoid when you're building a new house. We're gonna help you, if you hang with us, to the end, we're gonna have some tips about how to make one of your houses one of the best houses in the neighborhood. It's gonna be great, let's get into it. So one of the things that people think about that might be the best thing to do is to go with appliances from the builder. No, 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 no. We do not want to do that. And now here's why. You think it's easy, right? The builder's getting all those things, it's no big deal. Well, reality is they're going and getting a bulk discount and they're getting them all in one of their builder grade, you know, price categories. So you may not be getting exactly what you want or exactly what you would choose. Now it may match the dishwasher that they put in there, but it may not be the one that you would choose over time. And so often we recommend people go ahead and get a credit. Um, and then there's appliance sales all the time. And my favorite personal hack is that we will either wait for the sales, you know, every holiday, there's some kind of appliance sale at one of the big retail stores. And what I tend to do personally is I go and find the scratch and dent, right? I go on Mondays and Tuesdays, find those things that have come back in from over the weekend that got bumped in the doorway on the way in, but are brand new and are now a thousand dollars cheaper uh, because it's been moved twice. For sure, they're in our house and they are hidden because that corner doesn't show in our house or whatever, right? The back left corner of the washing machine goes up against the wall. Like it's not going to matter or we're just going to, you know, bang it up too. So that's a really good idea to go with a credit because you could maybe upgrade those or get a different one that maybe has a particular feature that one of the builder finished appliances didn't have. So the next thing is you want to be careful and mindful about your lighting package. Now, lighting can be super tricky. When you're buying in a neighborhood and you're building with a builder, sometimes you want to build exactly what everyone's doing. 70% of the neighborhood, right? Ask the sales representative that's with the builder, ask them, hey, what are most people doing? And you want to be at least with the average, if not more. And there may be a few things that you choose, you know, to go ahead and upgrade. But the reality is you want to be really kind of trending. You want to be at the average and maybe just a little bit above the average as opposed to doing something just crazy, like completely out of um, left field. So ask that, use that builder representative as one, of, that's one of our tips. Use the builder representative as a resource and say, are a lot of people doing this upgrade or a lot of people not doing this upgrade? And it varies from neighborhood to neighborhood and price category to price category, right? So you just got to be very specific as you are looking. Now, when you go through with lighting, you've got to be very careful because you can pick some and you may pick some from their building lighting designer. But the reality is there may be some that's even better and cheaper that you do after the fact. So just know you're, you're, you've got a balance there. You've got a sliding scale of where you're going to spend your money. And if you hang with us till the end, we're going to give you a couple recommendations of where you should spend your money and where it goes for the best value long term. But lighting often is not one of those places you can do that over time. It's also a really easy thing to upgrade later and be able to say, hey, we just did a bunch of really great lighting upgrades and you can be on trend. That's one of the hardest things when you're selling houses in the resale market is that they're way off trend, that the lights that were cool 15 years ago are not cool now and you can tell. This is one of my favorites to save people so much money. This is when you go into the kitchen and you wanna make sure that you're mindful about your kitchen hardware. Mm -hmm. That's one of the easiest things to do. Spend the money on the better cabinets, on the higher quality cabinets. Save the money on the hardware because you can shop those. You can wait for sales on those and then you can get those super easily installed in your own time or after closing, or maybe never, you don't, you just don't know. But this is one we can see people blow the budget on their hinges, on their poles and on their kitchen hardware. And this is one of the easiest ones to do. And some people do it almost immediately the same day of closing to go back with it and save 50 or 60% in the value. Be mindful of those choices. Another thing, you know, you might not think about this, but actually upgrading paint from the builder is actually one that we recommend you avoid. It's probably best to let them go ahead and do it when it's a brand new house. They're coming through and spraying all of it, right? They're going through and really in a volume way, they've got their own paints. They've got all of them that are going in there. Now, is it the highest quality paint? Probably not. But the reality is four or five years into living in this house, you're going to want to repaint or customize 
or do wallpaper or really start to make it your own or it'll just be time to do some paint and that's the time where you can go ahead and get a really high quality paint versus a builder grade paint and upgrading it then and the other thing is if you're doing it you might not actually end up with that by accident nothing on purpose by the way no sleight of hand no magician trick where they're charging you for the upgrade but how do you know i mean how do you really know if you ask or do a paint upgrade that you're there you're not going to be on site and see them bring the heavier and thicker paint into the house so you just don't know and so it's one of the things that we recommend for folks go with the builder grade let them go ahead and paint and finish that out get it finished and then as you do your design over time that's the time uh, to go through and improve trim or wall paint another thing that we like to guide clients on is window tree treatments and blinds. Now, everybody wants the builder to install blinds. We actually just got through negotiating a contract where we got the electric blinds installed as part of the deal just for a convenience factor. And some houses you're seeing those pre-wired, but you know whether you're going to do plantation shutters or you're just going to do some temporaries until you decide what kind of blinds and hardware and drapes you're going to do. Well, the reality is you don't want to do too much of that with the builder. Right out of the gate, you want to just go ahead and make sure you can live in the house, have some privacy while you're getting it all set up and arranged, but I want that to have a little bit more time. Now you can put this into the deal, but it may be something that you want to wait over time, shop it and do one room at a time. At least that's something that we've done in our family as we've waited and really gotten each room right. And that's been affordable, but it's also been places where we choose to spend money on certain things and not on others. And that's been a really, really valuable part to really give our house more character instead of everything looking exactly the same from the very beginning. The last thing we ought to look into that's easy to do even after you go through and close is baseboards and any carpentry you want to do. Any carpentry in the closets, any carpentry in the pantries is very, very easy to do after the fact. So you're seeing builders starting to do some really cool accent walls, feature walls, or, or even green walls, you know, where they're building things out and you can have living plants on the side of it to help the indoor air quality. And actually, those are things that are very, very easy to do after the fact and can really be a standout difference. It may be one of those things in that 30% we we're talking about when you're talking to the rep and they say, yeah, most people are doing this, but you can wait and you could have different trim. You could have different baseboards that'll really make you a standout and help you put you over the top when you go to sell in the market. So that's something that we've seen a lot of people doing and can be very, very helpful and really make a difference when you're competing with other houses when you go to sell. All right. Again, if you found value in what we're sharing, please go ahead and give us a like, drop us a comment below. That also is super helpful, uh, helping us reach other great people just like you, but you've been with us this long. Now we're going to give you some of our absolute favorite tips of things that you should do as far as upgrades. And it's mostly things that you can do that give you future added value. And you'll start to see builders out there giving you unfinished flex space. And one of the things we recommend with our clients is finding those kinds of opportunities. Where are your flex opportunities that are really difficult to do later? So the first one, and always an I have clients, multiple clients message me all the time about their lot. And when we go out to a neighborhood where they're picking different lots and lots are, you know, you can choose, you want to get the absolute best lot you can for your price category, but you got to consider a lot of different things. Where is it in the neighborhood? Where will the street lights be in the neighborhood? Where do the car lights hit? Are the car lights going to hit your front door and come in your front windows every night? Um, are you in the front where there's a turn or across the street? in a T intersection where there's going to be people, you know, coming by and it's going to look like, you know, freight train coming through like Looney Tunes, you know, where you, those are the kinds of things. Recently we were out with a client who loved a lot. And I think you've heard me talk about them before, but we actually said, this isn't the lot. This is going to be the last lot in the last part of the neighborhood to sell because it was at the bottom of the hill and it was going to have a lot of water issues. We actually could move up the hill about six lots. We got a really, really private lot oversized with some privacy in the back and even some woods. And it didn't even have a lot premium with it. Now, lot premiums are a different video. You could check that out uh, on our channel, but that's something you want to look at on the lots. It's very difficult to change a lot later. Uh, in fact, you're not going to change the lot later. <laughs> you're going to move, <laughs> which is a good thing for us, but it's not best for your value long term. Now, let's talk about something structural, right? If you're going to do an upgrade and do extra insulation, if you really want to go through the process and have a really, really nicely 
energy efficient house um, and get extra thick walls. If you're going to do two by six framing on the outside, very difficult to change the framing of the house later and the thickness of the insulation or the insulation later. It's very difficult to do that, especially in the walls and in the crawl space. It can be done. This is a place that you may think about, you know, doing that for sure. And then, you know, looking outside, you know, if you have an opportunity, if there's a deck and an opportunity to go ahead and get a larger deck or a patio that's being poured, the concrete trucks are going to be there. Go ahead and say, hey, is it possible for us to go ahead and double that or even triple that um, or to get a sidewalk, you know, a walk around a friend's entrance from the side? And uh, you can do that. And that can be a really, really valuable thing. The concrete truck is there framing that up really doesn't cost that much more. So that can be a huge asset, you know, in the process and be something that you do choose to go go ahead and do. You know, and the final thing, and if you've watched our channel at all, even our touring channel, which you can check out right here, if we have a touring channel that we've launched, that's all about doing tours of houses, and we always talk about the flooring in the house. And so you may choose to go ahead and upgrade your flooring now because it's much easier to do than doing it later. We even had a client actually in their selections went through and chose carpet but by a mistake, the builder and their hardwood floor people put hardwood floors all over their first floor. And we, we were like, hold on, time out. We didn't want that. And it was too late. They were already down. So we ended up putting carpet over those, which is going to be a huge asset to them in the future that if they need to, or if their buyer wants that, their future buyer, we're like, hey, just so you know, we already have hardwoods here. All you have to do, pull the carpet up, have them refinished, and they're good to go. Literally brand new. So such a cool thing. Very rare for that to happen. Not recommending that happen. It was just part of the building process. And that's the thing people don't realize. Sometimes things happen in the building process. Like we talked about the paint might not actually get upgraded. It may be builder grade and you end up paying for it. Hardwoods might get installed when you're in there. You know, those can be just messes. And sometimes they're to your favor. Sometimes they're not. So that's why we do videos just like this to help you know where you can take some of the stress out, where some of the pressure can come off. And that's hopefully you could go through and really enjoy this process and get really, really excited about it. So let us know your favorite tip that we've shared today. Drop us a comment below. That really helps us. Again, I'm sure you've already subscribed, but if you haven't, go ahead and make that happen. Give us a like and listen, YouTube, and we think you should check out these two videos right here. There are other videos just like this. And if you like this one, you're going to like these. Until we connect again, my name is Alex. And I'm your friend in real estate in Nashville. We hope to see you again here on the channel. And please share this with someone you know that we need to know that's moving to Middle Tennessee so we can help them make Nashville home. Until we connect again, keep on keeping on. We'll see you soon.